Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to introduce you to a new concept in physics called momentum. Now I'm sure you've heard the word momentum in everyday language, you may even have used it. Uh, it's often associated with uh, sports terminology. Um, so I'm going to show you the physics definition and kind of relate to the everyday definition as well. Let's check it out. So at the simplest level, uh, momentum is a physical quantity that combines an object's mass and an object's speed. Now, momentum is given by the letter P, a lowercase p. Um, uppercase p is, is reserved for power. Momentum is a lowercase p. And it's a combination of mass and velocity. And it's actually just a multiplication of the two. It's mass times velocity. Momentum doesn't have its own units. So it's going to, we're going to look at the equation for momentum to determine the units. So it's mass, which is in kilograms, times velocity, which is meters per second. So if you ever forget the units, you can just look at the equation. Okay, so momentum is mass times velocity. Momentum is a vector, uh, and velocity is a vector as well. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. So momentum is really important in collisions, as we'll see throughout the, this chapter. Um, and the idea is that when objects collide, what's going to matter is not their mass or their speeds, but a combination of those. So for example, a, if a truck uh, moving at a very slow speed hits you, it's not as bad as a truck moving at a very fast speed. But a car, who's much lighter, if the car is moving really, really fast, it's actually going to hurt more than a truck that's moving really, really slow. So the idea is that individually, these things don't really matter. Um, they matter as a combination of the two. And that combination that matters is momentum. Okay. So in collisions, we don't care about mass or velocity individually. We care about the combination of the two. Now, I mentioned earlier the sports analogy, and a lot of people will say um, something like, this team has a lot of momentum. And it means that they typically means that they've been winning a lot of games. So there's a higher chance that they would keep winning games. Um, so in physics, there's an analogy to this. There's a word that represents this. And it's actually not momentum. This idea that if you're moving, Therefore, you will continue to move or you have a tendency to keep moving is actually inertia, right? So this tendency to keep winning, let's say, if you're already winning, um, is inertia. Or tendency to keep losing, if you're already losing, would be inertia. But the momentum analogy isn't completely wrong. So one way that I like to think of momentum is how hard would it be to stop something, right? So if you look at M and V, you got a car coming at you. And if you have to stop the car, um, the heavier the car the more momentum, therefore the harder it is. And you can just intuitively figure this out or imagine this, that it's harder to stop something that's much heavier. Also, if it's moving faster, it also becomes harder to stop it. So one way to think of it is how hard it is to stop something or how hard is it to get something moving, right? It's harder to move um, heavier objects and it's also harder to get objects to a faster speed. So with the team, the sports team analogy, you can think, if a team's winning a lot, they have momentum, so it's now presumably harder to beat them because they've been winning a lot of games uh, and they're sort of in the zone. Cool? So hopefully that kind of paints a, a uh, physics-specific picture with the equation, but also just sort of an everyday uh, language uh, analogy there for you. So we're going to do two quick examples here just using that equation. So I have a 100 kilogram, 140 football linebacker running at six meters per second, and he's gonna tackle head on in the air, um, this other guy here. So two guys of different masses. Um, I'm gonna make this one like a little bit bigger. Whoops, looks like a baby. So this guy has a mass of 140 kilograms, and he's moving this way with six meters per second. The problem, the example doesn't say that he's moving to the right, it just says that they tackle head on. So I gotta pick that one's going to the right, the other one's going to the left. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily say that this one's going to the right. Therefore, the other one, a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna draw them a little skinnier, is moving this way with eight meters per second. And the mass here is 110. Now, before I do anything else, let me point this out to you. Remember, velocities are vectors, they have sign, they have direction, direction matters. If they're going opposite direction, they have to have different signs. So right away, please don't forget to do this. A lot of people forget that, so right away put the signs so that you are safe. Uh, part A says calculate each person's momentum before the collision. So momentum is just P equals MV. So P here, um, the mass here is 140, and the velocity is 6. And if you multiply these two numbers, you get 840. I'm going to call this P1. 
And then P2, this is guy 1, this is guy 2. P2 is MV as well, but with this guy's information, so 110, and the velocity is negative 8. This is negative 880. Now, the reason why I got a negative, it's because he's going to the left. We'll talk about this a little bit more later. Remember, the units are kilograms, meters per second, kilograms, meters per second. This is part A. I found both momentums. And then it says B, if they become entangled, in whose direction do they move? So you, uh, on a, if, if we have a better, a more obvious example here would be sort of a bowling ball moving really fast towards a, a ping pong ball, also moving really fast, you would expect that if they somehow get stuck together, they're going to move in the direction of the bowling ball because the bowling ball is much heavier. But, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have to do with how heavy you are or with your mass, more specifically. It has to do with your momentum. And because the lighter guy has more momentum, if they get stuck, they will move in the direction of the lighter, lighter, whoops, it's ugly, lighter player. And the reason for that is because he has more momentum. Cool? So he's going to win because he has more momentum. That's why in football, P equals MV. In football, you want to be as fast as possible, but you also want to be as as massive as possible, as heavy as possible, so that you have the most momentum. The tricky part is that if you're more massive, it's harder to be to be really fast. So how can you be more massive and also faster? Well, you have to be stronger, and that's kind of obvious um, if you think about it. Cool? So let's do example two real quick. It says, how fast would you have to throw a 145-gram baseball so that it has the same momentum as a 10-gram sniper rifle bullet traveling at 900 meters per second? So the basic setup for this problem is you want to know how fast you have to throw a baseball. So I'm going to call the ball object one, and I'm going to call the bullet object two, and I want to know, I know that the mass one is 0 0.145 kilograms, always in kilograms, and I, I want to know what must V1 be. I know the information, I have a lot of information about the bullet, I know the mass of the bullet is 0 .01, 0 0.010, that's 10 grams, and the velocity here is 900. I want to know what is V1 so that the momentum of one equals the momentum of the other. So this is where we're going to start. P1 equals P2. And I'm going to expand both sides. In other words, I'm going to replace the P's with MV's. So it's going to be M1, V1, M2, V2. And if you look carefully, you see that you have all the numbers except for your unknown. So mass one is 0, 0,145, V1. Mass two is 0, 0, one zero and the velocity is 900 and you now have to just toss this over here divide by 0.145 and you get that the velocity one is I have it here 62 meters per second and out of curiosity um, actually these numbers are pretty close to what a sniper rifle actually shoots uh, in the weight of a uh, of a bullet or the mass of a bullet of a sniper rifle closely um, and just out of curiosity, I went to look this up. This is roughly 140 miles per hour, uh, which no, no, no one's ever thrown a baseball that quickly. So this is kind of impossible. Not that it matters. It's just an example. But uh, anyway, that's it for the intro for momentum. I'm um, going to mention a few more points here, and then we're going to do a few more examples.